Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Crusader Kings II The Byzantine Empire, where we are going to follow Marcus Aurelius and his glorious lineage as we reconquer the glory of what was once Rome. My goals for this campaign are many, but because I've seen LPs of this game that could take 150 episodes, I'm going to have to set them to be reasonable and concrete because like my Dominion's LPs, I don't want this to really go beyond 30 to 35 episodes. So I've been thinking that two potential goals that I can explore are to reconquer what's known as the De Jure Empire, which is what we have, but also the Balkans and Bulgaria south of the Danube River, as well as Georgia and Armenia, and a little bit more of southern Italy. That's a possibility. Another possibility I was thinking is that I could reconquer three of the four great cities of the early Eastern Roman Empire. Those four cities are Constantinople, which I own and is my capital, Antioch, Jerusalem, and Alexandria. The three of those currently in the hands of the Arabic invaders, the Ptolemids, Ptolemids, and the Abbasids, and the various current groups of people who are rebelling against them. I'm going to be using the Legacy of Rome DLC, the Byzantine Unit Pack, and the Songs of Byzantium, as well as a bunch of other DLC that won't have as much of an effect on this campaign. I will not be using any mods, because this game is complicated enough as it is, and I don't want to necessarily add something to it that I might not understand. I'm starting in January of 867, the Old Gods start period, because I prefer it to the typical 1066 start period. It could be argued that the Byzantine Empire is actually stronger in 1066 as it owns most of the land south of the Danube in Europe. However, it has the threat of the Seljuk Turks to the east. So either way, I prefer this. Most games that showcase the Byzantine Empire showcase them quite further along when they're just about to die. A good example of that is Europa Universalis IV. I would like to start them as early as possible because in addition to playing the game, I would like to follow it up with his historical dialogue about the Byzantine Empire, what was going on around the times that we are playing, and I hope to add a little bit of interest and information to this LP that you don't often get in other LPs. So I hope that you find that really enjoyable. I, I see it from Surreal Beliefs' playthroughs of the Rome campaign of Rome 2 Total War, and I just thought that was really cool. It inspired me, and I'd like to do a little something like that for the Byzantine Empire, because if you followed my earlier LP of Byzantine Pythium for Dominions 4, you'll know that I'm somewhat of an aficionado of the Byzantine Empire, and I enjoy reading and learning about them. So I'm sure I'll enjoy talking about them as well. So let's look at our hero, Basileus Marcus II of the Byzantine Empire. I did not add the two myself, that was added by the game. It's a very smart game, and I believe it's referring to the original Marcus Aurelius of the Roman Empire, so it considers, just like the people of the Byzantine Empire did, it considers the Byzantine emperors to be the direct descendants of the Roman emperors, and so the naming scheme takes that into account. Currently, I am unmarried and 27 years old. I am a fortune builder, which gives me uh, a little bonus to most of my stats, a, a little detriment to diplomacy, but a plus six to stewardship, which is great. I like to have high stewardship because it gives you more territory that you can personally control, territory in your domain. I am quick, which gives me plus three to pretty much everything. I wanted genius, but there's just no way I could have enough points to do that and still keep Marcus under a respectable age limit. I do have Attractive, which gives plus one to Diplomacy, and hopefully will be a trait that will be passed down to my descendants. I have Lustful, which is a very easy negative trait to take because it gives you plus 20 Fertility, which is great at the beginning. I want to start pumping out a lot of kids as soon as I possibly can, and the only detriment it gives you is a plus, or sorry, a negative 0.25 to your Piety, which as a Byzantine Emperor, there's plenty of ways you can refresh your Piety, but I did it already just by the content trait, which lowers my intrigue by one, but otherwise gives me plus 0.5 piety a month, completely reversing my lustful. And while content may be a bad trait for 
someone who the computer's controlling, since I'm controlling it, it doesn't matter. I can be as content or, or uncontent as I'd like to be. I also have the wounded trait in order to, to give myself some extra points to play with. Now this is a problem. You could potentially die, and it could end the game right there. But if you're watching this right now, that didn't happen because I won't post these videos unless I manage to heal myself from my wounded trait. And it was a way to give me some extra points so that I can add patient and these other good traits to my character. So that's Marcus. As you can see, he's very good at stewardship. He's very good at learning, which I think is fantastic for Marcus Aurelius since the historical Marcus Aurelius had those traits. Not so good at the intrigue, not so good at the fighting, which actually Marcus Aurelius the Emperor spent most of his life on the frontiers fighting, but there you go and good in enough in diplomacy. I'd like to be better in diplomacy, but when you when you add up the state diplomacy, he's pretty good, and that'll continue to be higher. I would like a high diplomacy because the Byzantine Empire tends to be ganged up on, and I would like to make people happy so that that doesn't happen, and I believe, though I am not certain, that a high diplomacy will also reduce the risk of my people revolting against me, which, as the Empire, is always a threat you need to take very seriously. I am currently starting off as the Duke of Thrace and Adrianopolis, and I own these five counties right here. Now occasionally throughout this LP, I'm going to be asking my listeners to provide me advice and help in certain areas that I'm particularly not good at. One of which is intriguey bad guy stuff, because I'm just not good at that. And one thing I want to do early on is cast off the Duchy of Adrianopolis, which is rather poor and replace it with the Duchy of Nicaea. And this guy, the, the Du of Nicaea, is an unmarried man of 35 whom I, is, I am his heir. His heir, I'm sorry. And so offing him right now would cause me to take over his titles, which is what I want, but I'm crappy at intrigue, as you see, and am nervous about it. So maybe there's a better way to do it, Please let me know. I'm, that's what I'm not good at, and I'd appreciate that. And he's also the Count of Nicomedia. So he's the do of this entire area, but he's only the Count of this one area. I would like eventually to be the Count of all these areas. So that will be a goal of mine. Maybe I can encourage him to rebel, and then if he rebels, I could take his lands away. I don't know. Let me know, please. That's what I need help on. But eventually, I would like my personal domain to include the entire Duchy of Thrace and... Nicaea so I can make lots and lots of sweet sweet money. Now let's talk about naming because one aspect of Marcus Aurelius LP that I know you all love is that I name characters after my viewers. Well I'm going to be doing that in this LP as well. I'm going to be naming my descendants after those of you who request to be named in the comment section of this video. Now please pay attention because it's this video only and the reason why is because I want to be fair. I want to be I want to be, have this completely based on chronology, and the only way for me to be able to organize people in an honest and transparent way is to have you all request your names in the same comment section of the same video so that anybody could look at it and see who commented before who. With There's going to be one exception, and that is, as I mentioned in my last Dominions LP, those few people who were signed up for that one but didn't get named will take precedence, meaning even if they're, even if they ask to be named 24 hours after the first bunch of people ask to be named, they will move to the top. But there's very few of them, and if they don't ask, they're not going to be added. So I don't think that will impact things all that much, but I want to be fair to those people because they waited for 35, well, no, 39 episodes of Byzantine Pythium and never got to see a character named after them, and I, I feel bad about that. So I want to make sure they're taken care of. The next thing I want to say is that I am completely gender neutral here at Marcus Aurelius LP, and I value sons just as much as I value daughters. And so your odds of being named as one or the other will be equal. I will not only be naming my sons, I will be naming everyone after sons and daughters because I think they are both valuable, and frankly I don't think I will have enough sons over the period of this LP to cover everybody. So that's just part of the fun. Uh, even though I understand that my viewership is 95% male, and those who comment in my videos, ostensibly 100% male, you're going to have a 50% plus or minus a couple percentage chance of being a girl. And that's just fine, but I want to make you aware of that right now. And 
in my previous playthroughs of this game, just so you're aware, I'm, I treat my daughters very nicely. I Instead of being ruthless and trying to marry them for political gain, I try to find them husbands who are nice and have good traits and will treat them well. That's just kind of who I am. <laughs> I know I probably, for best gameplay purposes, I probably shouldn't do that, but that's just the way it is. The next thing I would like to ask your help with is alliances. Obviously, I have a lot of enemies nearby and I'm gonna need to get some allies early on that are gonna be accountable and are gonna help me in my wars. Bulgaria actually doesn't dislike me too much, but considering I'm probably gonna go to war with them sooner rather than later, I would prefer not to ally with them. I would very much like to annex Georgia and Armenia into my empire since I'm gonna need them eventually, and it is an option that I can ask them for, but they won't accept it. Italy seems like a pretty decent group of guys to ally with as well, including, I believe in the past, I've allied with Bavaria. If the Magyars come down and take northern Bulgaria and start the nation of Hungary, I may consent to allying with them as well. And if Kiev or the Rus or whatever gets started around here and they accept orthodoxy, then I will consider allying with them as well. My wars are probably going to be with Bulgaria, Rashka, Croatia, and Slavonia, as I need that territory from my de jure empire. These Islamic people in Sicily and southern Italy, and the Islamic Arab caliphates and sultanates over here, like the Tolanids, the Aglavids, the Abbasids, and these other random little rebelling factions of theirs as well. So that's, that's a lot of intro. So why don't we just go ahead and slowly get started here. First thing I want to do though is Marcus is a single man and needs to start pumping out some kids. So let's give him an ambition to get hitched. And now let's find him a wife. Now I want somebody who is going to have good qualities and is going to give birth to children who have good qualities. So first of all let's look for someone who's exceptionally good at diplomacy. Okay, so she's a gray eminence, which is fantastic, and she's kind, but she's craven, and I don't want to have a craven emperor, and she's also ambitious, and ambitious wives mean poison in your drinking cup, so that's probably not a good idea, and she's gluttonous, which lowers stewardship. She's just, which is fantastic, I love that trait, but she's also craven and ambitious, so it appears all these ladies who are good at diplomacy are craven and ambitious. Next is stewardship. Okay, Princess of Navarra is Midas touched, so she has high fertility, which is fantastic, and even more money for me. She's a bit mean, which is cool though because it lowers her intrigue, which means she's less likely to assassinate me. She's gregarious, which improves diplomacy. She's diligent, which is a great trait for my kids to have. And she's kind. You know what? I think Marcus can put up with a angry wife in order to get all of these other great traits. Proud is okay. Zealous, well that's okay too. Just is a good trait. So Ermintrude, the princess of West Francia, is a little younger and she's also a good choice. I'm not sure. But she has three negatives, although proud, I don't necessarily know if it's that much of a negative. And what about you? You're 18. You are lustful. And so slothful, though I, I can't deal with that. Brave is okay. Patient is okay, just like me. Hmm. Who's it gonna be? Well, you're a courtier, so you're off the list. Princess and princess. You know, they're both... They're both pretty cool. She's a little younger. Zealousness is not a problem. Being proud... She's kind, which lowers intrigue. And the diligent trait really is a good one. It's plus one to everything. Although just is a good trait too. I think just causes your, your people to like you more, lowers the risk of revolt. Ugh, decisions, decisions. She and, they're both Catholics, so that doesn't matter. Honestly, from a diplomatic perspective, West Francia, well, they're both equally far away from me, but West Francia is a bit more powerful than Navarra. So let's go with Ermintrude. 
and she will say yes. I will gain 54 prestige from Rain House Carling. That's wonderful. Let's do it. How old is your dad? King Charles the Bald, he's 43. He hates me, but he's perfectly happy to give me his daughter in marriage, so all right. All right. So that's been taken care of. Let's see. We're going to lose some titles on succession. I know. I don't have a uh, an heir. I get that. Two titles can be created. We're not ready for that yet. We're unmarried. I'm aware of that. We can pr press de jure ducal claims. Maybe in the future, but not right now. All right. Let's get started. Let's look at my council while we're waiting to get married. 17. Is everyone better than you? The majority of the population of Spalathos has been converted to Orthodox. Fantastic. We're going to convert the whole world. Okay, you are 14 diplomacy. Oh, yay. Uh, one gold or 300 prestige. I'll take the prestige. And we are now married. I fulfilled that ambition. Excellent. Excellent. I've already fulfilled one ambition. I've only been playing for a few minutes. That's fantastic. He's pretty good. I'm going to keep him. Strategos of 13, though. Not so good. You, you're a courtier. You're ambitious. Sure, you're my new guy. And you can improve diplomatic relations with Georgia, because I eventually want to annex them. You, my friend, can research military tech in Constantinople. 19? I don't think there's anyone better than you. You know, you're, you're the best. You are fantastic. Do of the of Sibri Hout, which I think is down down here. You are going to research economy in Constantinople. Thank you very much. Count Staurakios of Limassol. You are 20. Oh, I don't think there's anyone better than you. No one's even close. You are amazing. Oh, maybe I should have you assassinate that dude while I have you. And you're 19. I don't really care about your bishop. How's my patriarch? Uh, you're more holy than my patriarch. Well, you're going to improve... No, no, no. You're going to research cultural tech in Constantinople. Excellent. And now that I've become married, I need another ambition. And I know what that's going to be. We're going to spit out a son as soon as possible. But any, any kind of child will be welcome. Okay. We can call in allies. East Francia, do you want to help us against these... Aglavids? Aglavid? Vids? Yeah. Do I need them to? I don't know. We're pretty powerful. How are we doing with money? 132? Hmm. I'll think about it. So my council's all set up. My laws are kind of cool. I like medium crown authority. That basically means that um, vassals can no longer wage private wars with each other, which is fantastic. It does make them like me a little less, but I'll deal with that. I tried high once, but I found that the opinion modifier was, was worse than the benefits. Feudal levies are normal. I might raise that to max at some point, but not right now. Taxation's fine the way it is. Eventually I might raise that up. I don't know if I feel comfortable with it. Technology's good. We are, of course, the Byzantine Empire, so we should have a higher level of technology in this era than anyone else. I definitely want to start raising a retinue. That's very important, specifically a cataphract retinue. They are 126. I think it's worth it just to get started. It's, per it's great to have a retinue because it kind of discourages people from rebelling against you, and if they do rebel against you, you have a standing army of elite troops that can just rock them like a hurricane. And eventually we're going to get the Varangian Guard at some point, too. So that's good. Got my retinue starting. Let's put this back on. Oh, you know what else I want to do real quick? And Not like that. No, no, no. I want to ask my lovely wife to convert to orthodoxy. What do you mean, no? I'm the emperor. Would you like a title? I'm not giving you a Caesar. You'll like me a lot, but that's not a good idea. Shoot, and I can't give you money? Why not? Oh, I don't have any money. 
Hey! What a concept. Alright, you can stay Catholic for now. Meanwhile, I believe it is time. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Maybe. If you say no to me, man, you're gonna regret it deeply. Alright. Military. You know what, I'm just gonna raise individually, because it's such a hassle moving everybody around. Oh, he's he's gonna aid us! Yay! Alright. And that way I can I can only raise troops from the part of my empire where they can get there easily. Does anybody have any fleets? Do you have any boats? Oh excellent. Excellent. You don't have any boats, really? You must have boats. Okay. Okay, they have 4,000. I can raise my local troops, of course. And my county troops, too. Alright, what does that leave me at here? Well, I guess we'll find out soon. Okay, and of course... You guys are going to raise your troops just for local defense. And raise your boats, too. You can help us move people around since we're coming to your aid. You as well. Okay, we'll move you down here to help. I'm not going to raise the troops here. There's no point because they'll simply get killed. And I'll lose war score. I don't think this will be enough. I think I need more. Come on, we're the Byzantine Empire. We should be able to recruit more men than this. This is pathetic. Let's keep the Eastern armies chill. Hopefully this will work. The music in this game is lovely. I hope that I have my audio settings well enough so that you can all enjoy it. Merge. Why cannot why cannot we merge? Oh, because you're in port. Hello. Okay. I believe each boat can carry a thousand No, a hundred people. So that's three thousand. How many do we have? Not a whole ton. Oh, just just under three thousand. Let's put you guys together and get you on the boat. Okay, let's drop you off here. There's no real benefit in terms of land for me to win this war, because if you win a defensive war, you only get, like, money for it. But it's okay. Some prestige would go well. It'll keep my vassals happy with me. Okay, another group of guys that we can load up. Mount up! Regulators! Wow, I just totally dated myself. <laughs> Half of you probably don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. Alright, 5,000. Gosh, that's still... I'm not comfortable with that. Come on, guys. Alright, so... Let's get our best guys to lead this. Dew of Paphlagonia, the Count of Brindisian, and the Dew of Charcianon. So my best warriors. All right, and we're ready to go. All right, so before the end of this episode, we're gonna have one good battle, and that'll be fun. Oh, they're splitting up their troops. Oh, yeah! Ermintrude is pregnant! Oh, by the way, if, if she decides to have a baby in this first episode, I have a list of guys who have been with me since the beginning, and uh, they've commented on multiple videos since my first LP, so for the first couple kids, I'll throw them in, just as a mark of honor, if that's necessary. 
Okay. Let's do this. Let's see, are we going to get any kind of penalty? Can't tell, but we'll find out. Orthodox Uprising? You, what? You're not even the bad guys. Okay, what are we, how are we doing? Excellent. We are victorious. We shall free our lands from these... Are they infidels? I guess they are infidels. Heretics are when they have the same religion, but it's slightly different. Infidels are when they're a different religion. Come, mighty Byzantine warriors. And that's the special Byzantine unit from the unit pack. Okay, we're in skirmish mode. Now we're in battle mode. Come on. Byzantium! And congratulations, Byzantine Empire. We are victorious. Oh, we just got a whole lot of war score. And we're gonna get a whole lot more. Your armies will be crushed. You dare, you dare attack the mighty empire. We are the sons of Marcus Aurelius. Good night. 68% more score. Is that enough for you to uh, surrender? It sure is. What's enforced demands? He won't accept that. Alright, well I want to enforce some demands. These guys are out of troops. How much war score do I need? Come on now. Have I healed from my wound yet? Ooh, our knowledge of noble customs has gone up. Fantastic. Okay, not much is going on. I'm obviously going to be playing it at a slower speed in these first few videos while I get my bearings, and, and if these are more critical because I'm weaker. If I become stronger, then obviously I'll move it faster if I get more comfortable. But we are... We are awesome. And you know what? We can storm it because we have more than... I've heard if you have more than 10 times the defenders that you might as well just storm... We, we will lose guys, but it'll make it go by more quickly. Okay, up to 74 war score. And we have a son. Okay. Who is my son going to be? Well, I'll tell you what. If you have been watching my videos since the original Ur campaign, you will already know who this is, and it satisfies two requirements. It's a person who's viewed and commented on my videos since the beginning, but also someone who wanted to be part of Byzantine Pythium, but was not able to. Our first child, Unit 171, congratulations. You are the crown prince of the Byzantine Empire. And I will, of course, be raising you myself. And... All right, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are not going to region. Isn't that the name of a region in... Uh... Oh, the wound is healed. Fantastic. All right, folks. I know that I can post this video because the wound is healed. Oh, oh. The Magyars have found a home. The Hungarians. King Almos the Great of Hungary. We should send him some food. <laughs> Oh, yes. Sophisticated humor. Actually, you know what? Let's let's just try to win this war before the end of the episode. How about that? You deserve something exciting and, and fun. Meanwhile, we have Orthodox Rebels, who should be fighting for me. I mean, I'm not sure what... Don't they want to live under my benevolent rule? Who wouldn't want to live under my benevolent rule? 
I'm Marcus frickin' Aurelius, the Philosopher King. Nah, whatever. Some people, you know, they just don't know how good they have it. Oh, 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 oops. I need a new ambition. Let's pump out a daughter. Excellent. Back to the siege. How are we doing religiously? Okay, yeah, we need to make... We need to conquer these places in order to give them a patriarch. I get it. Oh, Georgia likes me more. Excellent. Do you like me enough to be my vassal? Oh. Uh, what? Sure. Why not? The more the merrier. Okay, Georgia. I would like you to be my vassal. What? Oh, you're at war. End your war, sir, so that I may ask you to become my vassal. And together, we shall rule the world! <laughs> oh, how's Nicaea doing? Do you have an heir yet? Shoot! That was fast! I might have missed my chance here. I, you know, I don't know if I'm capable of assassinating a little boy. How damn you, you 36-year-old ancient person. I guess I'm going to have to encourage him to rebel against me. And then I can confiscate his lands. Victory! Ooh, Georgia likes me even more. I've got Georgia on my mind. <laughs> yeah. Enforce demands. Okay. So he pays me 368. I like it. He loses piety and prestige. And I gain piety and prestige. And Orthodox gets moral authority. Yeah. I'm going to conquer your entire realm, sucker. You're going to beg me for death. We're going to get all kinds of moral authority. Okay, 95. Come on. Come on, dude. Really? Alright. That's what you want. Storm another one of your castles. 100%. Ooh, I inherited the county of Brandesian. Alright. Yeah, I'm enforcing every demand. I won. New important... Ooh, organized ranging guard. Yes, absolutely. What do I need here? I lose 300 prestige and 300 gold. I have plenty of gold and plenty of prestige. Let's do it. Varangian raiders sailing from the distant north down the rivers leading into the Black Sea have proven themselves to be formidable warriors. You have managed to recruit a great many of their number into a personal guard loyal only to the Basuleus. The new Varangian guard will not only form a powerful shock force against the Emperor's many enemies, but the foreign routes should also preclude them from becoming too entangled in the palace intrigue and power struggles that are so commonplace in Constantinople. They shall serve me well. Haha! -ha. So what a good episode! We've we've gotten married, we've had a son, Unit 171, we've won a war, and we've found the Varangian Guard, and what? Let's see, you want to honor your obligation and answer against Duke? Sure. I'm not going to send any troops or anything, but I'm more than happy to help you morally. You guys, I'm going to disband y'all. Except for my retinue. And they are going to go home. Let's get these boats over here. Alright, look at that. How about a hero I am? Alright, so what about my son, though? Little Unit 171. I need to raise him. Oh, and one thing interesting I have to tell you about the Byzantine Empire before we end the video. If, let's say Unit 171 has his own son before he becomes Emperor. Well, unlike most of the rest of the world, that son will not be first in line for the throne. He will at first, but if Unit 171 has another son after he becomes Emperor, that son, despite being the younger son, will be the first place to the throne. And the reason for that is the Byzantines place a lot of 
stock in being what's called born in the purple, which means it is an, it's an honor bestowed only to children born of a ruling emperor. So even if you're the third, fourth, fifth youngest child, if you're born in the purple, you automatically are first in line to become emperor. It's just an interesting thing. Now, of course, Prince Unit 171 is born in the purple, and so that gives him a plus 0.5 monthly prestige, which is fantastic because prestige just does all kinds of great things for you, and it's it's the way to go. So, good job, 171. And I guess they'll ask me at some point if, if I want to be the one to race him, because I certainly do. And that's that's good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.